Blood Rain is the 2005 Uva Bowl movie that took everything you thought you knew about vampires, didn't care, and gave you a giant piece of shit instead. And no one has ever questioned that. The movie doesn't even make it through the intro before it starts falling apart. First of all, all appearances by Billy Zane are special. Now you rock. Second, he plays an important character and is in multiple scenes. I think destiny is a more appropriate term. This makes it seem like it's a Stan Lee cameo. Are you Tony Stank? If you're still not convinced at how much of a shit show you're in for, this is literally the very first line. What do you have for us? His terrible dubbing is even more distracting than his god-awful wig. Anyways, they're vampire hunters who are so good at what they do that vampires just walk right up to them. <laughs> he just stabbed a guy in the chest who was just standing there. Why does nobody give a sh I like you, Brimstone people. You never make a mess of the place. What are you talking about? There's a rapidly decaying body right in the middle of your bar. Whatever. So they find out there's a carnival in town and rush off to go see it while treating us to some more highly emotional dialogue. And how do you suggest we deal with this army, Sebastian? At the carnival, we see a mind-blowing act where this lady cuts a candle with some swords. <laughs> Simply incredible. This is Rain, the star of the movie and also half vampire. How can she possibly hope to top cutting a candle? Oh my God. Anyways, Rain gets sick of starring in medieval jackass so she breaks out and murders the fuck out of everyone. <laughs> By the time they get there, most of the carnival is dead. And again, nobody cares that there are rotting bodies everywhere. So they do the perfectly normal thing and start chopping the dead people's heads off. <laughs> The movie doesn't explain any of this or why when they find a survivor, Vladimir, Sebastian, they have to fucking kill her. <gasps> what the fuck is wrong with everyone? At least we get our special appearance. Billy Zane is Michelle Rodriguez's father, who's also a vampire. He dictates a letter where he tries to get her to betray everyone. Our beloved Burnstone Society can no longer defeat Kagan. I really hope she takes his offer because as the only one in the entire movie that seems to give a sh**, I'm really rooting for him. Oh, you're such a sucker. Since Uva Bull is so awful, the only way he could get across any semblance of a plot is to just have a magical fortune teller talk straight to the audience. There's a reason you're here. No, there isn't. Long story short, Rain's dad has become the most powerful vampire. And if she wants to kill him, he killed my mother. She first needs to go to a monastery and get a magical eye. Be careful, my child. The eye is far more than a mere trinket. Shut up, lady. Nobody gives a sh**. Just know there's a prophecy that the movie makes up as it goes along and let's keep this shit moving. So whatever, she rides off and the movie pads its runtime by needlessly showing her riding her horse for what feels like forever. Sometimes by herself and sometimes with whoever the fuck this is. We have to sit through eight different views of her riding her horse before finally making it to the goddamn monastery. But that's not all. Ben Kingsley sends his army to follow her and we get eight different views 
of them riding their horses at the exact same time. We get the f***ing point. So after finally arriving, they give her food and a place to stay. And then you may rest. So she pays them back by trying to steal this guy's necklace and then bashing his f***ing face in. <laughs> His necklace turns out to be a key to the next room, and she does some Indiana Jones shit and finds the eye in a box. But then the room starts filling up with water, which is bad because in this movie, water kills vampires. So she looks at the eyeball. And now she's immune to water. Obviously, the monks don't seem to mind that she literally crushed one of their faces, and they explain to her her father has an army of humans who chose to work for him rather than die. By sheer coincidence, they attack the monastery at that exact moment. The monastery is being attacked! What comes next is the most embarrassing battle scene of all time. This guy went into it without a weapon and just starts pushing people out of windows. What is this? Why is he swinging straight up? And why does he even bother blocking it? Then Madsen runs up some stairs and then just kind of bumps into a guy. Why would you choreograph something that stupid? And even though it's adorable, why is this guy's act so tiny? How are we supposed to take any of this seriously? To be fair though, this guy sitting on his horse, twirling his sword was pretty epic. Desperate to stop this shit show, but also understanding it must end the dumbest way possible, he just walks up and knocks Rain out with a single punch. They decide that even though that was really fucking pathetic, they might need her for some reason and set out to rescue her. He brings Rain here, but luckily for them, this place has the worst guards in history. How do the guards not see them? Look just a little to your right, you goddamn idiots. They don't even react when the other guards are hit with arrows. This one guy has time to fire three different arrows at three different guards who are all within 10 feet of each other. Honestly, they could have just walked right around and behind them and I doubt they would have noticed. Anyways, this is the home of Meatloaf, who's a powerful vampire. Mightiest of all vampires. What? No, not even close. He's a complete freak show, and the movie never explains why they even brought her here. He decides she stays. Which this guy isn't happy about, but a surefire way to prevent that would have been to not have brought her here in the first fucking place. Anyways, he's about to do creepy things to her, but luckily she wakes up and bites him before passing back out. These two then kill all the vampires. And if you haven't noticed by now, vampires are pretty weak. Like, really fucking weak. I really don't understand how they're a threat to anything. So they rescue her, and even though she's unconscious, she somehow runs to the horses with them. And after a lot more goddamn horse riding, it's now nighttime and she's still unconscious. She was punched a full 24 hours ago and just now wakes up. And of course, it's right when they're talking about her boobs. And there's also that. They play it off like they were talking about the cross, 
but come on. Why are you taking me? You should be grateful you're still alive. What? She can be grateful and still wonder where the f she's going, you dickhead. So they throw her in a jail cell and don't trust her. What would make us think that you won't attack? Until she tells them how Kingsley raped and killed <laughs> her mother. After that total downer, she trains with them and we get a training montage of her going from being terrible <laughs> to still being terrible. Now that that's out of the way, this guy's been pretty quiet, but he wants everyone to know that he's a fucking idiot too. First, he forgets she's a vampire and invites her to dinner. You're more than welcome to join us for dinner. Then when she reminds him, I don't think the food you have there will be of interest to me. He cops a fucking attitude. You act as though you're the only one who feels pain. What? She doesn't eat food, dipshit. What does that have to do with feeling pain? He one-ups her in the being fucked up department, though. My mother and father were both killed by Vladimir. They had turned, and I was to be slaughtered. Which she finds hot as hell. Which brings up a deep question. Can a movie that's been an incoherent mess the entire time go off the rails? The answer is, who fucking cares? Let's move on. Rodriguez is pissed that Rain's getting all the attention. It seems you've become very popular, Rain. Right? So she does what any rational woman would do and betrays everybody and slaughters the entire village. Now we get another special appearance when this guy throws a severed head at Zane. We never learn who this is or why he does that, but he's actually more annoyed by the piece of paper. Stop throwing things at me. Zane tries to get him to betray Kingsley. Unseat Kagan and join me. But he refuses. Kagan's gratitude. Oh, Kagan's wrath. And none of this ever comes up again. This entire scene is completely fucking pointless. Just like the eyeball, there's also a magical heart that Rain needs. When she goes to get it, it turns out the traitorous bitch is after it too. It was them, or all of us. Talk about awkward. They then have an epic battle, <laughs> and Rain gets the heart. Now that she has the heart, she's ready to face her father. I have brought the heart for my father. This isn't suspicious at all. There's definitely no reason to even check if the heart's really in there. They lock her in a cell, but luckily, these guys are going to blow up the door and bust her out. Just kidding, they're incompetent and are immediately captured. Take them to the dungeon. So Kingsley has to do a ceremony in order to get the eye out of her. Please continue. And in a shocking twist, it turns out the box was empty. She didn't even put a fake heart in there. Her entire plan was that nobody would ever check the box and it fucking worked. That's almost as dumb as this escape. My companion is gone. I don't know what's become of him. Which also somehow works. Uh, uh. We then get a battle that is somehow worse than the one in the monastery. <laughs> Kingsley shows off his high level sword fighting skills as he just points his sword at Madsen and slowly walks forward. Not to be outdone, Madsen gives the performance of a lifetime where he doesn't even seem to realize that he's been stabbed in the heart. These two idiots kill each other. So now it's just Rain and Kingsley. Kingsley's about to win, and now this guy's alive again. To be human and die. He throws water at him and shoots some arrows, which Rain uses to finally kill him. 
So now the movie decides to give the audience one last middle finger and tells us if Rain bites someone, they don't die, they become a vampire. Please you don't have to leave me. That would mean all the people she bit and killed, including Rodriguez, <sighs> aren't actually dead. And what about the vampire she bit who then died? <gasps> None of this makes any f***ing sense. The movie then ends with Rain sitting on the throne. I have no idea what that means since everyone's dead, but who cares? This travesty is finally over. If you don't agree that Blood Rain is the worst movie ever made, then I should skin you and hang you on display.